Hey guys, Doc. Kind of a long video, but I'm trying to squeeze about a whole week of stuff into one video, plus I'm getting over a horrible cold. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of stuff in here. Not only are we gonna talk about lawns, we're gonna talk about the gardens. I'm gonna just show you what's going on, the crazy stuff at the farm property, because I'm getting ready to pack everything up and head down the beach house. We've got a problem with that zoysia lawn. So this video is a little bit long, but stick with it, because I sort of put a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, this is probably like 20 hours worth of video squeezed into like 20, 25 minutes. So here we go. We're gonna talk about organic and synthetic fertilizer. Tomato, is this an organic fertilizer? It's organic matter. It'll rot and eventually if you cut it up and put it down, it'll rot, it'll decompose and at some point in time, it'll release nutrients and create good microbes and good fungus. So I guess, yeah, it is. Yeah. Believe it or not, this uh, is also an organic fertilizer. Dog poo. It's fish food. See it? If I throw it out here, it's gonna become, guess what? An organic fertilizer. If I throw it out here, watch this. <laughs> oh, the piranhas are loose. The piranhas are loose. They're eating my organic fertilizer. That literally is one of my favorite parts of the day, to come out here, grab a handful and feed the fish. But the point being that anything organic that is going to rot, decompose, and eventually release nutrients into the soil can be called an organic fertilizer. So you can take fish food, you can take, we used to use chicken crumbles, um, you can take so crushed soybean. Most organic fertilizers are actually crushed soybean. Get the point? Crap, if you wanna put crap on your lawn, a whole bunch of bad bacteria, go ahead, put manure down. That's the whole process, that's the whole thought process about organic. When you hear the term organic, that's what you think of. And that's an organic matter that's gonna break down over time, slow. And as long as the temperatures are warm, temperatures are warm, it'll break down microbes, active microbes, active good fungus, everything will go to work and eventually that'll feed the soil health and feed the soil and provide nutrients. So grasp that concept first. That's the first thing I want you to grasp so you understand the difference between organic and a synthetic. I do not need any of your fertilizer, okay? You're done, no more fertilizer. This is a synthetic fertilizer. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. So what happens when a YouTube guy gets laryngitis, has a horrible cold, and loses his voice? <laughs> Ain't no videos happening. So I'm gonna have to try and talk softly. Um, this has been day five of this cold. <laughs> That's moved down to my chest. And yes, I've been to the doctor. It's not COVID, I tested. Anyways, we all know what synthetics are. The only thing I want you to realize about synthetics is when you have a monoculture, a monoculture is one plant and that's it. A lawn is a monoculture. And there really is no way for us to diversify that. And there really is no way for us to add organic matter to that lawn. So we can't bring in composted manure and dump it all over our lawn. It'll look like crap. So that's where synthetics, like a putting green. <laughs> they're not gonna come in and they're not gonna put manure all over a putting green. They're gonna use a synthetic fertilizer. There's a specific purpose for that. But also temperature has a lot to do with that. Organics do not decompose and they do not release nutrients well in colder weather. So in the spring, we strictly go synthetic on our lawn. Do not use anything organic on your lawn. Push your lawn hard with synthetics while it's still cool out. And then once you start to hit the 80s, then you get in the 90s, then you get into the summertime, that's when you can do something like a dirt booster. Put dirt booster on your lawn not only will it feed it a little bit, but now you're working on your soil biology. That's so critical. As an example, um, up here in the garden, we don't use any synthetic fertilizers. This is all dirt booster and dirt booster super compost. Look at this, this is insanity. Now I'm gonna try and give you some perspective here. I'm gonna step behind this zucchini plant and I hope you can get sort of realize 
how crazy this is. After three and a half weeks, <laughs> this is, that's yellow squash. This is zucchini. These things are enormous. So the good witch came up here yesterday and she freaked out. She was like, oh my God, these things were like three inches just a, a while back. And she, and she freaked. The other thing she freaked out about was how much produce is actually being produced. So you can walk up to any one of these plants and just pull it back. And what you see is nothing but yellow squash. There's got to be 25 yellow squashes on that one plant. We tilled these strips, put dirt booster, retilled it into the soil, and that's it. That's all we use. Then we use the super compost, and we put super compost in around the plants over time. That's it. We haven't used fertilizers in our vegetable gardens almost five years now, four or five years. And the reason why Dirt Booster Plus, I think is the product of the year for 2023, is because the Andersons made it an all-in-one product. Dirt Booster used to be the Dirt Booster plus a packet that was stuck on the outside. And that packet had the mycorrhizal fungi and the microspores. Now it's all in one. So with Dirt Booster, the brown part, the golden part is a corn distillate, which is really fine and flaky, breaks down really quick. Molasses particles. Then you have humichar inside of it, which is humic acid and biochar. You're putting everything into your soil that your plant wants. You're putting mycorrhizal fungi spores. You're putting good uh, bacteria spores. And this, this is the result, folks. This is absolutely, look at these tomato plants. Now this is, this is the end of May. This is the end of May and in a minute, I'm hopefully gonna be able to talk to you about the soil test results I got back 48 hours ago from these different fields and something pretty interesting from the cornfield and up there. But we can't do this on a lawn. We can't come out here and put composted manure on top of our lawn. It's just gonna, it's just gonna mess it up. That's why we stick with synthetics. And then once it gets warm, we can put out a product like Dirt Booster. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to piece together some weird parts of video coming up <laughs> since I don't have a voice. Ryan came out, we cut the backyard, we put down PGF Complete and Dirt Booster. I'm going to put that up. The Good Witch came over, she worked in the garden some, I'm going to put that up. I had a tree fall over here, I'm going to put that up. I'm going to take you up into the gardens, I'll talk about soil tests and uh, I'm gonna do the best. This is gonna be a little bit weird. It's gonna be jumpy, but I've got like four days of video footage and I'm getting ready to go to the beach house. I'm gonna fix that zoysia lawn because it looks like crap. So hit subscribe right there, wherever it is. Hit that subscribe button because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through my process of diagnosing what's wrong with that zoysia lawn and how I'm gonna fix it. It should be pretty cool. Plus I might take you fishing while I'm down there too. Um, I'm going to be down there probably for at least three weeks working on that, taking a break, and then I have assignments for everybody here. So anyways, I'm just going to, I don't know how this video is going to turn out on how it's going to end. Stick with it because there's some pretty interesting stuff later on in the video. All right, so good witch showed up. <laughs> We're going over all the job responsibilities here. And basically Ryan's here too. And Ryan's going to be sort of managing the farm property while I'm gone overall and then he's got he's got to work with john and jeff to take care of the grounds out here man it's windy today <laughs> all of our hats are flopping and uh and then the good witch is going to come up probably to at least two days a week or two a week you come up in the afternoon you're gonna come on weekends or yes i can come during the week okay just whenever she'll probably come here during the week and uh spend a couple hours up here just taking care of the little baby she's really good with nurturing the plants um, you know, watching for fungus, pulling fungus leaves off, doing trimming, that kind of stuff. And then we're going to be tying up stuff. So, and then what I do is I go about three feet past the pole and I cut. Then what I do is I come down like this and I just come in at about this level. That's where I'm going to want to probably be. Anything that's lower, I'm bringing it up. Anything that I can possibly get up. 
even if I'm putting a little too much pressure, I'm okay with that. Squash. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Come around. <laughs> Just open up, open up that plant right here. Open up this plant and look at it. Oh my lord! Isn't that crazy? They are so fruitful right now. This one's more yellow flower than anything. Look at all that. Now, I've already got a squash that I would probably harvest on here because I like to get them while they're young on yellow squashes because they get too hard. But again, this is zero fertilizer. This is just using the dirt booster and the compost. And that's it. That's all we've got in here. All right, so let's go up to the cornfield. This is shocking. Now, you remember this was a brown field. It's corn. <laughs> this was a dead brown field, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. Three weeks ago, this was a dead brown field, four weeks ago. Oh it is the most gorgeous sight you've ever seen. It's corn. <laughs> well, it's not just corn, look at that ant pile there. Oh. This is clover, purple top turnip, brassica, a mix of turnips and corn all in here. Look at that. That is the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen. All right, so. Good witch is over there twining. That is a verb, we've decided. And then this is the orchard that we put in. And my security camera was doing an okay job on keeping the deer out because it screams at them. But then I kept hat, so I just want to keep them out of here. So we're just putting, we just put twine up here. But we realized we really want to have a way to drive the UTV in here or maybe even at some point cut in here. So what we're going to do is. Uh, we've got my cheap post hole digger and we're going to put another pole in here and then we're going to use We've got some extra black wire and we're just going to put a little black wire sort of set up here So we can sort of fold it back and we can drive in here and access if we need to water whatever we want so, Go ahead little redneck ingenuity uh, we just sunk another post in here put up a piece of wire staple it on one side got a rope tied in and we put a line up above we just open this up and now we can just drive in here if we need to cut water whatever we need to do lady love <laughs> my bear what why don't you come work in my garden this is bear what <laughs> the new voice of bear what <laughs> so uh i would say put it on number two go all the way down to one and then come back up to two so that looks pretty good right there i'm not cutting it real short right now um yeah, it looks nice. This is this is longer than I have been leaving it. So we have been cutting it real short at one at one inch. And do you know why? Answer that question for me. Why were we cutting it at one inch? It's because we had new seed down, and that need, new seed need to reach the sunlight. Well, guess what? All that new seed has germinated and is now coming through, and it is so thick. Ryan, how thick is that grass? Thickest it's ever been. Thickest it's ever been. It is insanely thick. See the new stuff, how thin it is. Yeah, you can see the it's newer. The it's the same height, but there's a lot of like the uh, that hybrid blue. Yeah. A lot of that's really thin bladed. Yeah. yeah, it's really thin and it's new, but it it can't if you don't cut it short. Anyways, my wife wanted to keep the stupid magnolia tree. I want to cut it down, but so now I keep saying I don't know what's worse, the dog poo or the magnolia leaves. So we're out here picking up both. So we're gonna bag it today. Um, it's so thick, I don't need to return clippings, and we're putting down Dirt Booster. So, anyways, here we go. We're going to cut.
So the only thing we've put down on this lawn to this point really has been uh, over the past few months is either Dirt Booster or PGF Complete. That's it. When we first started working this soil, we were putting out a bunch of humichar, but now that it's warm, and this is what I tell people, when it's warm, I usually switch over to Dirt Booster just because it has all that organic, has a mycorrhizal fungi, has a good bacteria. Now, someone was asking me about, um, Doc, will you do a video on mycorrhizal fungi? Well, I've done tons of videos on that. Um, basically, it's a symbiotic relationship where the, the term itself explains it, mycorrhizal. Mica means fungus, rhizal means root. It's a root fungus that attaches to your roots, grows out, and expands your root zone four or five times and brings nutrients to your plants. Got it? Mica, rhizal. That's what it means. It means it's a root fungus and it's a good thing. That's why Dirt Booster has it already inside of it. He said it looks good. He said it looks, looks all stripy. <laughs> looks all stripy. Is that a term? Stripy? I'm walking my butt off, but man, this cold out it set down in my lungs. Forget it. So again, basically the bag rate. We're putting one bag on the back here, and it's a nice light coat. People always say, "What do you mean when you mean it? Say a light coat, Doc." The bag rate is a light coat. It's a very mild fertilizer. Okay, and you have some left, right? Okay, so basically it's just under a bag that we've put on here. So that's a light coat. It's just over 4,000 square feet, just under 5,000, and we put just under a bag on. That's the perfect coat. Now, if you're spoon feeding, that's what it is. So uh, I'll just have him, I'll just take the rest of this. I'm actually going to throw it in my gardens and throw it on my plants. It's a 1648, which is perfect for plants, whatever else you got. So that's what we'll do with it. And then we'll put on the dirt booster. Then what they did this year is they incorporated the mycorrhizal fungi spores and the bite and the, um, the good bacteria already in this. So everything's already here. We use this in our gardens. We use it on our lawns. It's the I think I think it's one of the best products of 2023 2022 it's just so fantastic and so diverse because you can use it on your lawns you use it in your soil you use it in your compost piles you can use it everywhere and it's a hundred percent all natural actually it's coming out okay I'm telling you, you can put this stuff out as heavy as you want. If you want to come out here and put 20 bags on your lawn and make it a quarter of an inch thick, you can do it. I mean, we put it out heavy inside of our soils up in our gardens and they're fantastic. I'm going to show you here in a minute. But if you have, the perfect example is, is if you have a cool season lawn and everybody's telling you don't fertilize in the summer, don't fertilize in the summer, you can put this out. If you're in an area like Florida, where they restrict fertilizer at cer after a certain date, put out Dirt Booster. It doesn't matter what grass you have. Any grass in the world, put it on. If it's a plant, put out Dirt Booster. Ooh, it's a little bit windy out here. Again, you can put it out at any time. You put out a bug killer, doesn't matter. Put out Dirt Booster. Put out fertilizer, put out Dirt Booster. It doesn't matter. You can put it out at any time. I need a siren. We have a farm emergency. A farm emergency. A tree fell across our driveway. Uh, uh, what's funny? What's funny is them watching you, dude. <laughs> I just told them they smell like shit. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> They're like fascinated. Uh, what's this guy doing? Is he got food? Is that food over there? What is that? Is that just wood or is that food? <laughs> so the question of the day is, what happens when you fire up a chainsaw with a bunch of cows dead in there? I'm about to find out. You want to watch? I don't know what they're going to do, so. You all keep an eye on them for me. Sounds like the butcher shop. Morning. So I'm actually up here in the garden. Tomorrow morning we're leaving for the beach. I actually have a little anxiety and I'm starting to get my voice back. Thank goodness, man, this has been like a week, this cold and whatever it is, oh, horrible. But we had a, we've had a real significant temperature drop. The high today is gonna be 63. And then we got two days of rain moving in, which is perfect. And then we're back up in the 80s. So just because you have a dip in the temperature really doesn't mean anything. It's that consistency for the difference when you start to use some organic matter. Trust me, we are, as you can tell, <laughs> this whole, I guess, 15 acres up here, um, we'll see no synthetics except for that one field. I have to buy some natural phosphorus because those two fields, according to my soil tests, are actually pretty low on phosphorus, even though they're high in potassium. Good luck trying to find granular, natural granular phosphorus fertilizer. Anyways, it's, you know, May 28th or something like that. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Summer squash, zucchini, radish, and uh, man, So just, just understand that when you're, you're working with something that's an organic matter, that the temperatures need to work with that because there needs to be that corresponding biology of microbes and fungus that go in coordination with it. It doesn't work in the cold weather. That's when you have to go to synthetics um, because it just reduces, it's not that it goes away, it's just that it's not very active. So I know a lot of people focus on fertilizers and of course I've done that over the years and a lot of lawn care people are gonna talk about fertilizers, but we really are now sort of focused more so on our soil health. And especially now that we've got, you know, 40 acre farm property here, focusing on your soil health will reduce the amount of inputs, the synthetic inputs. It will reduce the amount of fertilizer you use. That soil health is absolutely critical. That's why Humichar, dirt booster. In addition, once you get this lawn nice and green, what I want you to do is I want you to switch over and I want you to think about how do I improve my soil health. That's the long-term investment that's going to make a big difference for you guys. It's not only has it ha done fantastic with all of our gardens, but our lawns, we reduce the amount of fertilizers and inputs we need. That's about it. Uh, get ready to pack up. Talk to you later. Hit that uh, red subscribe button and talk to you later, Doc. Thank you.